All right, so we're going to get started with our next session. So, did everybody know that TikTok has deployed pass keys? We like that. Um, we're really lucky because we have um, three folks from TikTok here to talk to you about the what, where, why, and how of the deployment. So please help me to welcome XK Lu, Daniel Grub, and Eugene Pivarov from TikTok. Hey everybody. Woo! TikTok, Hello. right? So we didn't prepare a dance. Uh, I've been <laughs> slacking off the past few days. I know that was a request from Monday, so I apologize. Uh, but first, before we get started, I want to see how many people have a TikTok account. Okay, that's better than I was thinking. Have you guys created a passkey on your TikTok account if you're on iOS? My gosh, okay, well, everyone needs to pull out their phone right now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're not going to do that. But really, you can create one. Um, anyway. That being said, I'm going to kick us off. My name is Daniel Gruby. I'm a product manager here at TikTok, uh, and I mainly focus on account security for the platform. Um, Eugene? I'm Eugene Pivovarov, and I'm a senior engineer in the uh, FIDO2 team at TikTok. Hi, I'm XK Liu. I'm the TPM for FIDO2 team. Yeah, and like you guys heard earlier, we're going to talk to you guys a bit more about TikTok's deployment of passkeys on the platform. Uh, we're going to start out with me talking a bit about the passkey success that we saw, just to introduce to you guys uh, the results that we had, as well as all of the product decisions that went into the initial idea for how we were going to basically build passkeys on the platform. Then Eugene is going to talk to you guys a bit more about the technical challenges that we faced uh, based on the product decisions that we made. Uh, and then last, XK is going to introduce to you guys the future roadmap that TikTok has for passkeys and some of the other things that we'd like to see with passkey technology in the future. So I'll kick us off. All right, so as you guys can see, uh, there are three main metrics that we use to measure success for TikTok passkeys. The first being uh, login success. As you guys can see up there, we have a 97% login success rate for passkeys on TikTok. This is extremely good uh, as, a login, uh, as a login method in general, but especially when we compare it to similar methods of equal security. Uh, think 2FA, multi-factor authentication, things like that. So it's been a huge improvement for our users. Uh, in terms of logging in, as well as having a more secure way of logging in. The second thing we looked at was popularity uh, through our eligible user adoption rate. So obviously not everyone can create a passkey based on technical requirements, but also uh, logic that we use to make sure that the authentic user was creating it for their own account. Uh, here we actually saw globally about a 14% adoption rate. Uh, depending on the platform, obviously this can be high or low. For TikTok, this was very high, especially when we compare it to other adoption rates for similar things like 2FA or other prompts that we've done on the platform. The last thing that we looked at was how is this saving us money, right? Uh, pass keys are not as expensive as sending an OTP code, as you can see here. So we actually saw naturally with the way that we implemented uh, TikTok pass keys on the platform is a 2% reduction in SMS OTP login, which saved the you know, company money, as well as improvements in app performance, which was mainly driven by users moving away from third-party login options and using passkeys instead. All right, so I'm going to take you guys through first kind of the why we did this, and then also some of the product decisions that went into the uh, initial design for this. So three main reasons why TikTok decided to adopt passkeys. So the first were pre-existing login security vulnerabilities, as you guys already know. TikTok has a lot of login options, which can create other vulnerabilities that we have to deal with on the platform, primarily through SMS OTP login, as well as password login. Uh, the idea was that we can provide a more secure way for users to log in with their account and hopefully you know, drive that traffic to a more secure method rather than these traditional ones that have some vulnerabilities. The second thing we looked at was this is a very user-friendly security option. As you guys have already seen in other presentations earlier uh, during this week, passkeys are very fast for users to use as well as very easy. People really like to use their face to log in, things like that. It's a very good user experience that everyone's pretty used to at this point. Um, and also it's very fast for them. Um, so that's been really awesome for users that we've seen. And then the last thing I wanted to point out is that TikTok actually has a special FIDO2 team. 
So when I first got to TikTok, Eugene was actually the one who approached me and said, hey, we've got this thing called Passkeys. I want you to learn more about it. Let's talk about it. Um, it's something that we've been using with our employees at TikTok, but we want to bring it to users on the platform because we think it's important that you know, not only our employees have the highest level of security on their accounts, but also our users. All right, so I'm going to take you through three of the main product decisions that we made when we uh, implemented this product. So the first one being login first. So obviously there are many scenarios that you can integrate passkeys with, right? It could be a 2FA method, it could be a sign-up method, but TikTok chose to do login first. So why did we choose to do that? As you guys can see, I don't know if any of you guys have logged into TikTok before, but as you can see right here, there are many login options on TikTok. You can use your phone, Facebook, Apple, Google, things like that. You, when you usually create an account, you don't always remember after you know six, seven months how you created that account, so it can make logging in kind of challenging when you have this many options. One thing with the way that we did passkeys, as you can see here, is that it pops up automatically for users when they've created a passkey on their device for a TikTok account. This helps navigate users to the correct and most secure login method automatically when they're logging in. So we saw this as not only a way to improve login, but also to upsell security at login and help users to do it more quickly and more easily and find their account. The second thing that we chose to do from a product perspective, as you can see from the GIF here, which kind of shows you how the login works, um, is an identifierless login. Like I said before, you can choose to have the user input their username, email, phone, whatever the identifier is that you created your passkey with to try to find that, but we already know at TikTok that that's kind of hard for users to do, right? You don't always remember what email is attached to what account, things like that. So instead, we opted for identifierless login which allows us to pop up the login panel uh, from iOS automatically when the user navigates to the login panel every single time. Again, this is going to show up first in front of any other login panel, so the user will always be upsold the highest and most secure uh, method to log in first. The last thing is registration. So we chose to do registration in two ways. The first being the more traditional. We put in our account settings, as you see here. You can go to account settings and go to passkey and then set up a passkey. Uh, this doesn't have very high penetration with users, right? So we wanted to do something else. We also chose to do a registration prompt. Uh, and we chose to do this simply with the iOS uh, create a passkey, um, uh, the, the prompt in the bottom sheet there from iOS only. Um, we're showing that in user's profile. So the reason we chose to do it there was one, the For You page is kind of like television on TikTok, so it can be kind of disturbing to your experience to have something interrupting a video. Uh, profile has very high penetration as well, but is not going to interrupt that experience for you. So we chose to do it in the profile. Uh, the second thing is, is that it also kind of connects the user already to their profile and their passkey, so that it helps them understand it's for the account that they're in right there, so they can connect the two. Um, and then third, we, we chose the aggressive approach because we liked the Apple you know, creation process, and we also wanted to get users to create it as quickly as possible to increase that popularity and adoption rate. And so uh, one thing I want to point out is we have a, a bit of data up there. Um, we actually found that 99% of the pass keys created on TikTok were from that profile registration prompt. So if you guys are going to do any sort of pass key implementation, we definitely suggest uh, looking into some sort of campaign to upsell this aside from opening it up in your settings is another uh, way for users to do it. Cool. All right, I'm going to pass it off to Eugene now to talk a bit more about the technical challenges. All right. Um, thank you, Daniel. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about the technical challenges that um, our team faced uh, while adding uh, Passkey authentication to TikTok. And uh, the first challenge uh, uh, is related to the uh, traveling users. So the thing is that uh, various national regulations require uh, storing the user data in their home uh, countries or regions. And uh, even though TikTok service itself runs in multiple countries and regions, uh, it can only access the user data in their home region. As the users uh, travel, uh, their location does not have to be, of course, uh, in their home country. They can be outside of their home region. But regardless of the user's physical location, um, only uh, the home service can handle all the API calls that require access to the user's data. So I'm telling you this because there could be some other companies uh, facing similar uh, regulatory requirements. 
Now, as um, Daniel mentioned, uh, TikTok uses a so-called uh, identifierless mode uh, of uh, passkey authentication. And to remind you, in uh, conventional authentication, uh, the process starts with the user making a claim about their identity and uh, providing some sort of identifier, such as email or phone number or whatever. And then the service verifies this claim. Now, in the case of identifierless uh, login, there is no such a claim. So at the beginning of the flow, uh, the service literally has no idea uh, to which account the user wants to log in. And therefore, it uh, cannot figure out the user's home region either, right? So what happens is that uh, at the beginning of the flow is handled by the server with the smallest response time. The server is uh, located typically relatively close to the user, uh, to the user's physical location. Um, but uh, this server does not have uh, the user's data. So it, it doesn't have a user's account and it cannot process uh, the login. So that's a problem with um, identifierless login uh, for traveling users. So how do we solve it? Well, fortunately, after the user unlocks a passkey, uh, the TikTok app gets the corresponding credential ID. And in the user's home region, the credential ID is mapped to the user's account. So that allows us to find a solution. We have no choice but to begin the, uh, the login flow with uh, generating and caching uh, the challenge in the nearest servers, just uh, as, as, as I have just explained. But then when the user uh, unlocks the passkey, uh, the TikTok app starts querying um, all uh, regions with the credential ID. And it finds uh, the user's home. The rest is relatively straightforward because the home service um, fetches the cached uh, challenge and other data from, uh, uh, from the user's uh, current physical location, strictly speaking, from the server in the vicinity of the user's physical location. And then it completes the sign-in. All right. Now let's move on to the second challenge, the uh, account switch problem. So um, TikTok users often have uh, multiple accounts. And uh, TikTok app allows users to switch from one account to uh, another in a pretty uh, simple way. So the user can uh, sign into one account, um, then uh, you know, um, without logging out, sign into another account then without logging out, uh, sign in to, uh, to the uh, switch back to the first account, and so on. So basically, they can switch accounts pretty easily. Now, registration involves two API calls. The first API, in, during the first API call, um, the app uh, requests for a challenge string, and uh, during the second API call, it submits the authenticator's response. Now, here is the problem. The problem is that sometimes, Providers, um, uh, providers' um, user interface, I'm talking about passkey providers' user interface, sometimes it is so slow that um, the user manages to switch to another account before the user interface shows up on the screen. And uh, yes, that creates a problem. In fact, it used to break our uh, registration flow. Why did it happen? Well, you see, it is rather tempting to associate all uh, cache data with the user session. And that's what we did. But after account switch, the user session changes. So in the second API call, the uh, service is unable to find the cache data that was associated with the first user session. And uh, what happens is that uh, it cannot validate the challenge and uh, the registration fails. Now, the fix is that uh, registration really requires its own dedicated session. So we generate the session now um, at the beginning of the registration flow, pass the corresponding session identifier to the client. It uh, returns it to the service during the second API call, and the service always uh, finds uh, the uh, cache data. Uh, effectively, it just ignores the account switch. So the lesson is that uh, we need to, that, that it is important to pay attention to various edge cases 
and therefore um, registration does require a dedicated session. And now XK is going to talk about the future of uh, Passkey set TikTok. Okay, thanks, Eugene. So after we reflect the past achievement, right now let's talk about what's coming next. So for TikTok, we're aiming to bring Passkey everywhere in all the situations. First, good news for Android users. After successful launch on iOS, we will bring Passkey to Android phones by the end of this year. And then for Windows and MicroOS users, we're not to forget you. So you can get Passkey the future on web application early next year. From a user case perspective, right now we're mainly using Passkey for logging. But meanwhile, we try to enable it for real authentication and the sign-up process. Speaking about the sign-up process, we're thinking bigger. Our vision is to bring to Passkey only account by extremely simplify the registration process, which means besides creating Passkey, you don't need to input a password, email address, phone number anymore. You can just with a couple click, you can finish the whole registration just like this. Sounds cool, right? But what if the Passkey doesn't work for someone? We already think about that. So right now we're brainstorming about the backup solution, maybe merge with third-party logging with the Passkey registration process together. So we optimistic this collaboration can make our vision come true. Of course, there's still a lot of detail to iron out. So if your company is also thinking about making Passkey only accounts, you are not alone. So we're eager to meet offline to discuss the situation and learn from your occupants as well. I believe in the past two days, you already know Passkey is so amazing, but there's still some room to improve. So on the next slide, we're gonna talk about some features, oh, sorry, uh, some features we hope we can see in the, in the future release. The first one's about the cross-platform support. One pain point right now we're facing is using Passkey cross-platform. As you know, Passkey today cannot be synced between Microsoft, Google, and Apple. So, for instance, if one person just buy a brand new Android device and then happen to trade in his old iPhone, he may lose all the access which are authenticated with Passkey, especially after we introduce Passkey only account. And the interplay between the browser and the operating system add another layer of complexity. Sometimes you may wonder who is really managing my Passkey? For example, if a user create a passkey through Chrome or microOS, is passkey managing by iCloud Kitchen or Google Credential Manager? Those type of questions really confuse regular users if they don't have a deep background about passkey. Secondly, cross domain logging support is needed. Consider take a shop as an example, which have multiple domains for different functions. User can log in, take a shop, and jump between the domains with works very well with the password, but after you introduce the passkey, it complicated the whole process because passkey will treat each domain as different reliant party. So it involved intensive change on both front end and back end, which hesitated the product team adopt passkey further. Last but not least, is lack of option to choose between the device bound passkey and the sync passkey. And Daniel just pointed out, we not only introduce Passkey to our end user, we already use Passkey to secure our enterprise accounts. So in some regulated high resource situation, we want to maybe enforce people just to use the device bound Passkey at that moment to, to meet some compliance requirements. But unfortunately, on iOS today, this option is not available. So it may introduce some risk for BYOD, bring your device situation. So your corporate account private key may accidentally to sync some vulnerable, outdated personal device through iCloud, and people can airdrop this pass key. So this situation may not sit very well for enterprise account. We already should, you know, discuss with Apple, Google regarding um, this situation. We understand, you know, all the trade off became the scene, um, but we still hope that there's some option in the future we can use it. In another way, on Microsoft side, and the situation totally reversed. They only support device-bound passkey. So, and I think this is the one thing we hope to see um, 
for give the user options to choose an enterprise account to choose between the two type of pass keys. Originally, I pre prepared a longer list to discuss, but in the past two days, I realized some issues are already addressed, some issues are on track to be solved in the next release from Google, Microsoft, Apple. It's so amazing to see this ecosystem rapidly grows fast. And giving all of you right now sitting with us during lunchtime, I believe we are set to accelerate even more. With that said, that's all the thing we want to share. So we are open to question right now. I need Lori to come get the uh, the mic because she's got on better shoes for this than me. Um, so you mentioned that you have um, gotten great adoption results. Congratulations! But you are and you are also expanding to more platforms. So uh, with this, um, people will start creating pass keys on the same account on different platforms. So how do you think about how people will start managing their pass keys if they first created pass keys maybe without any awareness of it because they just used the iOS prompt to create one? Um, how do you make sure that they know like their pass keys are on like different devices and how to make sure that they know to, how to take control of their own secu account security? Yeah, I can take that question. I, thank you so much. Um, so I think that one of the things, like you said, is what happens when a user might have multiple devices that are on different platforms, like Android and iOS phones, and they have one account, they create a passkey on both. How do they know that they've done that? Um, that's definitely one of the next steps we need to take at TikTok, is giving users more control over their account security. Um, the product vision at first was essentially trying to follow UX guidelines from Fido uh, around how can we upsell passkeys to users in a way that basically builds off of things that they already understand. So things like Face ID, Touch ID, things like that, and really use that to leverage high adoption rates. And I think that was the first goal, right? And so once we had high adoption, we can then follow with things like education and more power to users to manage their pass keys. I think that without that education piece, though, the management might not be as useful to users. But it definitely is something that we do want to provide and something that we're looking at now that we've taken this first step. So um, let's definitely talk about it. I, I know that we've talked a little bit before, uh, but we'd love to hear your ideas about how we could maybe empower users to manage their pass keys a bit better. All right, thank you. We have some questions in the app. So are you able to share the 2% the reduction in the SMS code costs? Can you give us a ballpark and what, what that means in like US dollars? Yeah, I can't tell you in dollars. I, I needed to choose between percent or dollars. I don't want to give away too much data. <laughs> um, but I would say that for us, that's quite significant, right? And what, what we're seeing is that I think the main point is that users are choosing to use pass keys over SMS naturally. This is not based on the way that we design the product, right? So basically, if you do have this option, um, at least for login with SMS OTP, um, we see a lot, a lot of users using that every day, right? So if we can naturally get them to move to a more secure and less costly method for our company, this has been very successful. So 2% um, uh, as opposed to other initiatives is very high. Uh, so this has been great for us internally so far. Okay. I didn't think so, but I had to ask. No worries. <laughs> so, um, so how long is your login... Uh, Time, meaning like, is there an expert uh, login expiration time for TikTok users? Like 30 days, 60 days? Like, and so the bigger question is, how often are folks signing out and logging back into TikTok? How often? You mean, yeah. What? What is? How like does that is, work? Like my TikTok account, for example. I don't know if I've ever signed out of it. So I'm just wondering. Yeah. <laughs> how, exactly. Like, yeah. It's not. It's not super common, right? Like people are not logging in and out all of the time. Um, I would say it's probably the most common for people who operate with multiple accounts. Uh, so businesses, creators, things like that. So really what this is aiming at doing is helping some of our most valuable users on the platform to take better control over their account. 
Um, and, and that's something that we also want to look into, right? Is like, I think this goes back, uh, Yuki, earlier to what you said. Um, how do we give users more control to manage their pass keys? And that's going to be a really important question for, like you said, those creators, those businesses who have a lot of different people operating out of one account. Um, because that's going to be how pass keys really empower those users to better use our platform. Um, because, you know, a lot of companies require things like two-factor authentication for those users. This is a much easier method for that, rather than having to send around OTP codes for SMS, things like that, which, you know, you never want to encourage uh, users to do that. So this is a way more secure way of doing this, um, and definitely something that we want to empower, especially those uh, those creators and businesses to Yeah, the, they're more at risk for folks to... Exactly. Yeah. yeah, their accounts are more at risk as well. Yeah. Um, so at the start of the talk, you had mentioned that you had a FIDO2 team. So when Daniel came on, do you want to join the FIDO2 team? Why did you have a FIDO2 team? How did the FIDO2 team come, come about? And when did that begin? Yeah. Do you guys want to talk a bit more about your team? Sure. Yeah. Well, I can answer that question. Uh, what we really wanted to accomplish, we wanted to uh, uh, centralize uh, uh, passkey uh, deployment across all TikTok applications. And uh, we also wanted our uh, TikTok end users to have the same level of protection that we are offering to uh, um, TikTok employees. So that, so that was the uh, motivation for creation of the FIDO2 team. And uh, we started actually with uh, rolling out uh, passkey authentication to uh, employees. It's still, uh, the, the process is still uh, going on, but uh, uh, now we uh, um, are offering it to uh, TikTok end users. So I guess it works, this, this process works really well. That's great to hear. I'm gonna, uh, let's take one, another question because it's very rare that we get a team of TikTok on stage, so. I had a follow up to your first question or the first question. So for pass keys, they're not necessarily one to one for accounts. So how do you handle multiple accounts using pass keys now? Sorry, multiple accounts using pass keys. So you, do you mean like one user has multiple accounts or one account has multiple users? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the, they, so I just want to repeat that. So he's asking if, do they have one pass key per account or do they? they yeah, they'll only have one pass key per account, right? When you create a new pass key, we'll overwrite the old one for the account. Um, yeah. And all of these options will show up on the login panel automatically um, based uh, with the identifier, right? So it will say like the username for each account and it will have all three separate pass keys there, and the user can select which one they want to use to log into. So if I create a pass key on my, my one device, but for three different accounts, all three of those will show up. Does that answer the question? Gotcha. <laughs> will you be around if we have follow-up yeah. questions? Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. Just, well, yeah, we can talk. Thank you so much. This is a great presentation. Yeah. Thank you, guys.